Welcome, welcome oh, thank to you. Thank you Animal Speaking. Yes. Um, I'd like to ask you, um, first of all, how did you um, break into the business of grooming and cats and dogs? Um, just uh, it happened by itself, kind of with me. I never thought I would ever be in this position, ever. So. Uh, but the things happened by its own. So I was uh, in the personal training, I was in the physical therapy uh, schools, I was the national goalie of Egypt for the hockey team. Wow. I was going in a completely different world when I uh, came into this world of animals. But I was in the sports world and the training and uh, stuff like that. But uh, somehow when I came into the United States, I was uh, looking for a job any job just to make surviving and I was walking in the street in Lexington up and down until I stopped to buy some place that I didn't even know what was for that store was but then I found uh, the place I walked in I'm asking for a job and uh, the guy there a nice guy his name is Mark the owner of, of uh, Keenan Styles he, he actually uh, asked me do you love animals the first question he asked me and I asked him I'm looking for a job I didn't know no English I didn't know anything. Yeah. But I was trying to, you know. So I told him, that's one thing I know. I do know. I do love animals. But I never thought I would be working with them. But in Asia, I had all my life cats. I had dogs. I used to kill the cats in the street. I used to love them. And uh, so he, he asked me, do you love animals? I said, I love cats. Once he said that, I said, I love cats. He was like, oh, can I? Particular. So he took me inside uh, where the grooming and he said, Do you like to do this? So I looked at the first time in my life I seen this once. I didn't know that it existed for grooming paper for dogs or cats. Oh, wow. We don't have it. We didn't have it. I didn't see it in Egypt. We didn't have it except in maybe a couple of places that we didn't know. So I uh, told him, Yeah, I would do that. I would work with animals. And he said, okay, so come next Monday and you get a job at 9 o'clock in the morning. So yeah. I actually tried to get out of it. I thought maybe I should work in a restaurant better. I found a job in some <laughs> in a daily, and so I could eat and whatever. But then it ended up getting fired on Monday, the same day that Mark told me to come over to this place. And I, once I got fired, I was like, I had another job over somewhere. Ah. Oh, that with the place with the dogs. Let me go with me, make sure I get the job again. So I went, and he was like, your first day coming three hours late. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, sorry. He didn't know I was not going to come even. Right. And that maybe would be the end of my career with the grooming. I wouldn't ever get this again, the opportunity to walk into a place and someone tell me, yes, come, let me show you. So I started working there, and it's kind of he believed in me, I guess, since day one. I think he believed in me, Mark, and he said that you have something to do with that. Because the way how I handled the dogs and cats, I think they thought that they really have a lot of experience when it was my first time actually to work with them. <laughs> and they say, well, how many years you've been doing this? People was inside. I said, first time I hold them. And they say, no, you've been doing this for a long time. And they thought that I was uh, already lying or something about it. I said, no, it's really, truly, it's my first time doing it now working but I had the animals in my life before. They say you get Mark told me, you know, you're gonna be great at this one day. And he was always, you know, trying to encourage me to go to New York school to grooming where I didn't want to go at all. I was completely rejecting this because I know I needed the job just maybe for a year or two until I step on my place where I know where I'm going and then go to my own field of sports and uh, physical therapy and education and stuff. But uh, never happened. He kept people loved me in what I do, I guess. And then uh, I went to a new, to Queens College, tried to do that. It didn't work. Nothing worked. Every time I did, I did the drive a cab, a yellow cab. Yeah. I tried to do a lot of things well, because I didn't think this is me yet. I, I love animals. I will have animals all my life, but not to work with them. I never do that. I would work with them. I wanted always to do the physical therapy. I love that. I love the massage therapy. I love, I'm good at this kind of stuff. My hand is good with it. stuff like that. It's a massage and all of that. Nature. Yeah. Good nature things with the mind. So, exactly. so your hands a lot. Right. Mm -hmm. 
you use, you use your hands a lot with yes. the grooming, so it's almost like a natural fit. It's a natural fit, actually, with the grooming, it kind of a key, because I'm good with my hands. And, and then you get your, and your feel, you have good feel for the animals. And right? I have so Mark great, always saw that yeah, feel. I, had, I love that, you know, cats and dogs all my life. It's Talk been something for me, big. Yeah. So you are Egyptian, and yes. you've got, we're here in this incredible place with all this, Thank you. these um, significant things from Egyptology. I'm curious, Egypt has this really epic history with cats and dogs, right? Yes. Spiritual deities, very rich, rich history. But things are really not the same there now as they were then. What do you think happened to kind of change that? Where, is the, where do you think the shift happened is the, the, that you know? Well, the big shift happened uh, like 40 years ago. That's the big one. Because this is when the radical uh, religion people came in, into our uh, land. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the thoughts of it, the mentality of the radical have entered our country like 40 years ago. Only before that, people actually loved the animals better than today. Sure. Before 40 years from today. People actually had a lot to do and the care and the kindness and the, a lot better than today, people. And that happened once the Brotherhood uh, came into our land. The Brotherhood Radical Islam came into our land. And the start the thing is coming out in our country regarding, uh, you know, you hear a lot of things. When we were kids, like one thing I used to hear when I was a kid, oh, dogs, uh, don't allow angels to come to your house, so you shouldn't have a dog in your house because otherwise the angels don't like them. You hear that, and people believe that that's religion, and they told them that's uh, the Prophet Muhammad said something like this, or this, or the Quran says this. Well, so nothing is that. Did you have dogs as a child, or did you people in your family have dogs and cats? As they I was the only pets? one in my family who really attached to animals. Mm -hmm. I have six brothers. Mm -hmm. uh, I was the one of them, or maybe all my cousins even, or something. I was the only one that had a connection with the cats, especially mm -hmm. cats. Dogs too, I used to have, I used to get care for them, I used to treat them in the street, I used to help them and everything. I was that type of a person as a kid since I was two years old. But uh, my, my brothers is not like that. But they used to look at me different, everyone. And they used to say, he has something with this. And they used to respect it a lot, especially cats. In the streets, cats in the street, uh, I never get bit from a cat in the street when I always touch them all. And I always care for them all. All the cats in the street. I used to come down and feed them, care for them. If someone is sick, if someone is this, I used to, you know, manage with them to deal with them, and they never harming me. And that was kind of surprising for all my friends and my family. They know that there is something to do with the connection with the cats, which I do have. Uh, I believe I do believe have some kind of connection and understanding of cats a lot. And the cats yeah, I look in, yeah, yeah. that you were not uh, going to hurt them too. I kind of talk with them. I have that language with them, with cats, and I talk with them, in, in looking in the eyes with them. I look in their eyes, they look in my eyes, and I feel them with my hand, they feel me, and I feel the energy, and they feel it. So let me ask you, um, that's, that, that seemed like your family was very supportive with you, yes. um, assisting the, the, the stray cats and dogs in your country. My mother. What happened? <laughs> my mother is. Yes. Why? She, cats, had, so she, she hated that I will bring the cats to my house. Ah. I had only one cat in my house at the time. The rest of they were from outside. I cared for them outside the house, but one inside my house at all the time. Since I was two years old, I always had a cat in my life. Never without. If one goes, the other one comes in and into my life. But I never bought one. I never right. even looked to buy one. Excellent. Even. Not because I don't like them. No, because I always have one. So I didn't really need to go buy no anything because I always have animals and I never choose to have them. They yeah. yeah. just come to They came me. to you. They found and, you. Yes. So I'm, yeah. I'm kind of curious yeah. um, with what you're talking about with the animals. When you when you travel back to visit your family and you go to Egypt, um, are you involved with any animal organizations or are you doing any work for animals in particular? To be honest, last time I went to Egypt, because in 25, I've been here 24 years now, and I. I didn't go to Egypt that much in 24 years. Maybe I went like six times in total. 
the last time I always go for an emergency situation, you know. And uh, uh, last time I went there, I actually get involved with the dog people in Egypt, with the people who love dogs. There is an organization there. There is a couple of organization in Egypt, and now it's becoming really big, coming back. I see it. And I seen this uh, uh, amazing woman that she opened up the biggest hotel for dogs at the grooming and everything training and everything in Cairo. Her name is Azza Ayub. And when I went there, one of the most important things in my trip, last the time like six months ago or eight months ago, was was my first thing in my mind is to go and visit that woman, this woman, so I can really discuss with her what can we do for Egypt. Yes, again. Great. Uh, I, you know, I went to her farm. She had like 20 acres mm -hmm. of farm in Cairo, close to Cairo, and uh, she had a hotel, dog hotel there. She raises, she raises dogs. She breeds them. She mm -hmm. trains them. She, she has a whole big thing there. Now that thing is going on. Now dogs. Now people start to understanding when the brother could fall off power and all that, then all them in thinking about dogs and cats is start to becoming different. People start understanding that this is what's in religion, what they were hearing. Mm -hmm. They hear that the dogs would enter your house, uh, that the angels would enter your, right. your house until the you know, dog shouldn't be there in your yes. house because they have something called the najasa. Najasa means uh, it's, you know, the saliva from their mouth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Usually they say that that's dirty. Nagasa means dirty. Dirty, you can't to go to pray until you're clean. So most of the people do wash themselves calls the wudu before you go to pray. Yes. Because you go going to chase God. Yes. And you gotta be with God, so you gotta be clean. So you gotta clean your hands, clean your clothes, go dressed nicely right. before you pray. Because you're gonna be between God hands in that moment when you're praying. So People used to say, say that when the dogs touch you, and you're even in your clothes, you can't go to pray, you have to rewash it. So it makes okay. it clean to the people more complicated in their life. Then you know what's interesting, interesting about that? Dogs have so many enzymatic processes in their oh, saliva yeah. of these animals, not being clean. Or cats, who are fastidious. They're clean, Humors. very clean. Beautiful. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but you know what? A lot of people out there today, they still don't know the truth. The truth is, I believe in, that it's, there is nothing wrong with the saliva. It's all with the brotherhood and the, the you know, radical Islam that came in and did this to us. And did this to our mind, Egyptian, and did this to our life. Because we miss a lot today. I believe that now Egyptians have missed a lot of understanding what really dogs and cats is about. When, uh, when, you, when, you, when you talk about that, and, and that's a, with the with the religion, isn't there also a difference in how people have pets in different countries? I mean, we have different concepts of what pet ownership would be, right? If some people want, and even within the United States, there are people who don't want the dog on the couch, who don't want mm -hmm. the cat in the house. Um, the English feel that, you know, with, there's something wrong with Amer a lot of Americans because we keep our cats inside and we don't let them go out. So is there a cultural difference as well, though, apart from the religion, to how um, modern-day Egyptians would even view pet ownership? Um, compared to how you, you see it here. I mean, certainly you talked earlier about the grooming, how maybe you don't have so many grooming shops. Maybe it's different too. Uh, you know, now with the globalization, with the internet and all that kind of stuff, it has really brought a lot of new things to also the Middle East. Mm -hmm. And especially I'm from Egypt, I talk about Egypt and the Middle East because it's kind of the same thing. So, brought a lot of realization, the people start realizing that they're missing a lot and those animals are not that what they were thinking about, right. you know, and okay. the, the, especially that the radical Islam and the radical religion, whatever it is, they always say, stay away from those animals and it's okay, you know, to leave them, they should be in the street or something. Okay. When, when actually, it, in, the, in the ancient days, when the pharaohs was alive and the civilization was going, was great time, then I believe they have, at that time, uh, the pharaohs have really did the right thing and understanding of the animals, same as we do today over here. 
in the United States and in the civilized world, United States, Europe, the civilized world. They did that, do the right thing with those animals, specifically the cats. And the uh, I was wondering, I, um, I, the art, the Egyptian art, always depicts the dog and the cat with these wonderful collars, collars that we use today. Of course, they're more exaggerated, they were probably pure gold, but it seems as though through history we've learned how to use collars on cats and dogs, but Egyptians always had had collars for their cats and dogs. It shows it in all the art. Can you expound on that? So actually, nowadays, they, people don't even put no collars on cats or, or harnesses. Mm -hmm. I don't see it. I never seen it except a very few and very rare. But why did they do that in, in ancient Egypt? I do believe that they have got them to train them cats, and they did know how to train them very well. Mm -hmm. And uh, they once they have collars, harnesses, some cats they have harnesses in, in Egypt, in the oh, okay. statues, you can see it. And the dogs is the same thing. So you actually, the same thing as we take it today, that dogs value a lot, and dogs is part of our family. The pharaohs did understand that very well. So we get the rest, dogs get the rest. We get accessories, dogs also get accessories. Dogs that wear gold, Dogs, if anyone like the rules of ancient Egyptian regarding animals, regarding animals, if someone by meant it or not meant it to harm a dog or a cat, there's, they can be sentenced to death. That's written on the papyrus of the rules and regulation for animals. Way back though, right? Well, not now. 7,000 years ago. Uh -huh. yes. And still, so, or no? It's still no, not at all. People love cats in Egypt naturally. But they don't have the knowledge that the pharaohs have, the ancient Egyptians have of them. So they don't have the care as much. But people by their nature, Egyptians, are really love, love cats. Until now. Cats, but not to... No time ago, people used to use them, you know, for catching, for this and this and that. They, they, had, a job. they had more jobs than today. Today, technology, they usually... The, the, they were used differently back then. Today, they're our kids more. Right. They're part of our family, same like before, but they're our kids. They don't have a job really to uh, to get the snake or to get the scorpion or to get here or there, you know, the to protect us, protect us our home from things like that. Today, we don't have to worry about this in the United States, in the civilized world, but back then, they needed that, and they considered them a great gift of God. So they used to have them like gods. They're gods in our ancient Egyptian. They're gods and they're symbols of great things. Mm -hmm. And that's what we believe. But, and, but just to go back to the cats. But they're, yeah, but they're not gods creators. They're gods in the form of uh, symbols of gods, okay. which is they do present God. But it's also they're tied into when you started to have these store a lot of grain and then they would go after the, the rats or they protect or the mice. They protect. And they were amazing at it. And, and you know what's interesting, just, just to put this in about feral cats, even now like in urban areas, one of the big things about keeping feral cats on the streets is they do keep down the rodent population. So they do keep yes. in certain areas. It's so they, do, they still, still have, have jobs. They still have jobs they to do. do. Of course, they, yes. they, uh, they, they do and they admit in their nature. Even my cat at home, sure. she wouldn't leave a fly going on. Not at all. In the house, you were yeah. going around and she she got it. But, but there's a bit of a difference. It's in their nature. Yeah. yeah, but right, so they do the job, but it's not like they're put there like way back. Okay, we're going to have the cats outside the pyramids to make sure that you know, you're protecting against the rodents. Now, when you have the cats, well, if they do they do something, that's great. If they catch the fly, that's great. But you didn't bring the cat in there necessarily to catch the fly. They'll keep them like in stores. They'll bring the bodega cats. Well, yeah, bodega yes, cats. Exactly. You know, they have yes. they have jobs, and, they and have they jobs. have amazing job because because they keep the balance in there. Sure, dogs and cats, they do keep the balance, and it's not like Egyptian maybe now because they don't need them. So most likely people have big dogs, maybe larger breeds for guard. Mm -hmm. They say that's what we need them for, so small dogs are what they really do. So they don't think it's, you know, but they don't understand it's a beautiful thing to have as a member because they're loyal. And they're never going to have a, a friend better than them 
a human being will never be like a dog how a dog will, will be as a loyal for you as a, a good friend a human being will never reach that level of loyalness and the, yeah, and the yes. so, and the so in, in, in Egypt now what is the status of the cat and dog in, in the, the present time, day yes the, today days over there is better maybe this years in the past couple of years I think it's getting better people start waking up actually and thinking that they have missed a lot because of the radical uh, religion thing uh -huh. that came in through. So people are starting out waking up, actually, I see that. A lot of people say, like, now can have dogs before they used to say, no, we can't have the dog because it's against religion. Mm -hmm. Today, world, now they found out it's not about religion at all. Now they're very happy to have the dog. People oh, are starting. Wonderful. We're starting okay. and then going back. Social media helps with and that. Social isn't? media, they see how the dogs are acting with their families, with the kids, and they didn't believe anymore the religious people. And that way, they start actually reading themselves in the books of religion. They found there is nothing. Don't you have I've never said anything wrong about these animals. With the feral dog population, I, I was sorry, hearing something about what's going on with Egypt, with how they're controlled, with the strychnine, where these dogs can be poisoned on the streets, that's one way to control them as opposed to um, what people would consider to be more humane, where you might be bringing them into a shelter or a situation or euthanizing them. So strychnine is a wrap which is you know the internal yes yes actually they services. did that around a club over there in yeah. Egypt you hear of that yeah. did you hear of that well, I, I, the cats who was poisoned outside of uh, Al Jazeera Club. Well, oh, this one. Al Jazeera Club, one of the biggest and fanciest club in the world. It's amazing, beautiful club. It's a huge. It's a sports club. Oh. And the, outside the the, the the fence and outside that there is so many street cats. So those cats can bring the diseases to the people and bite skins and this and that because they're. They must have rabies. Yes. They must have rabies and everything. They don't get no shots. So they poison them. This is the way how they deal with that kind of situation, that they poison those cats. Yes, I so heard of that. I heard this, but I, I, I think I'm going more to this was more of an official method to control feral dog populations, like on the streets, to do this. To this kill them, you mean? To, right, to control them. Exterminate them? No, it's not for that. It's not to control. It's actually to get rid of them, so that way, because there is kids who get bit a lot. Because, because you see, we hurt each other. We harm each other. We harm ourselves. Egyptians, we did that to ourselves without understanding, I guess. Because when you leave the dog in the street without no care, and the cat without no care, actually they will be dangerous about your kids and about your family. And people didn't know that this is going to come back to them one day. This is how things work. It's whatever goes on, comes on. Yes. So this is what happened. Whatever goes on, we we disrespected them for a while. We didn't care for them for a while. Today we're gonna have to pay the price. It's normal. I see it. Today we pay the price of our ignorance. But, but, yes. but you, could, you could have a, you could have other methods too, like in Indonesia, where you know they, you can even dart these animals with rabies vaccines, Absolutely. trap and neuter them, and release yes. them. So you can deal with these. There are alternative ways, like in, like here in New York, right? What do we do with the street cats? Trap, neuter, and return. So, but let me tell you something. Yeah. In New York, how many street cats do you have? Nothing. You maybe have a thousand, two thousand, ten thousand. In Egypt, it's millions. And until it's not about uh, over there, the animals for living they take care of in a, in a matter of medical. Let's say the cow, the horse, this and that. They use these things, so they actually get more care in the medical industry. Sure. Dogs and cats, since the people don't have them much and. Do, you know, don't take them to the you know hospitals and here and there. Exactly. Our veterinarians in Egypt, most of them, is for big animals. It's not for small animals. Yeah, mm -hmm. because we were over now a thousand or more years. We've been actually having this or more because mm -hmm. cats and dogs was kind of disappeared from Asia. Mm -hmm. The pharaoh hound and the original cat of Egypt, they're kind of not anymore much. Mm -hmm. We have 60 breeds, let's say, of Egyptian dogs that were, you know, out there statues and everything we have in our temples and they're drawing 
on our temples and on the papyrus. It's the Basinji, the Greyhound, the Sabuki, the, the Pharaoh Hound. These dogs did not really, it, it's kind of vanished, the breed. And I do believe that having in the Roman time could be. Could it be start at the Roman? Because the Roman wanted to invade the place. Same thing like the Brotherhood. Let's think about it this way. You want to invade a place? You got to distract it. Make it destroy, destroy it first. Mentally. So they first did that. Because the civilization of the, of the ancient Egypt have raised up because of what they have done with this, I believe. Have raised up because when you really do that, you have a lot of, a lot of great humanity here. And you, you have a lot of sensitivity here when you do understand this, when you put gold on a cat and put... The gold is a valuable, valuable thing in Egypt, and even ancient Egypt. It's a valuable thing. It wasn't something like, you know, easy to have. No, it's a very valuable thing since day one. And they used to, you know, love cats, do all this for them, you know, care for them like amazingly. The cats walk in the street like princes, the queen of Egypt, they were kind of the cats. And that's how they were respected. You know what I mean? Through all those years since the Roman and after the Roman, the they gotta have to distract the people somehow in their life so they can get in control. And I do believe that somehow the mentality change of the of the ancient Egyptian religion, which is I believe in that religion is the best religion, ancient Egyptian, because that religion have brought that kind of civilization. So I, I, I kinda yes. wanna just yes. ask you something, I, I guess about this. Um, from what you're saying, the change from the way things were back then and the way things are now, what would you say that um, the biggest obstacle is for the for the, um, for the the for the well-being of the animals of Egypt, and also what is the biggest challenge? If you could just pick one thing in each category. Um, let's say again. Which okay, yeah, sure. Coming, but what would you say is the the biggest obstacle obstacle to the well-being of the of the animals in the country, the dogs and the cats, and what is the, the best chance that they have for things turning around and people it's all here. them and caring? It's all here. Very good. It's right here. It's yes. all here. It got to do with the way how you think. And the way how you think, until you really change your mentality and understand it in the right way, you're never going to be able to do anything. Because no matter what you do, you are still not going to change you are. The people over here, that there is so many, much people in the, in the United States and around the whole world that they mistreating the animals really badly. It's everywhere. In Egypt, they don't mistreat them, but they don't care about them. <laughs> and they mistreat, of course, but I don't care for them. Yeah, yes. they're on the side, and we're in, it's like they have their own life. They don't understand it's all connected. Mm -hmm. We're all connected. Wait, so, yeah. one final question um, we'd like to ask all of our guests is what would you say to the people of Egypt? What is one thing that they can start to do today to make life better for the, the dogs and cats of, of Dogs and Egypt? cats? Or animals, it can be whatever, however you want to. I think it. I think it's just. It's gonna come one day. I think it's. It's all in their head. It's all in their head. Once they change the mentality of the way how they think, mm. I think it's gonna work. Right. What about time. some I form of education? It's gonna take some of that, of course, educational plus the media now and the open, you know, world on the internet that did already a lot people start really realizing mm -hmm. and with maybe some people like me I will be able to help in Egypt one day That's I'm working really on like doing you. something for them over right. there right. for the animals and because it's really sad really when you go to Egypt and see the animals like dogs beaten up in the street or mistreated in the street eating you know garbage and right. cats too it's not right I don't look at it it's not good it's not who we are it's not our history Right. And I wanted to bring this back where we really at the top of the world. Wonderful. Again, once again. Beautiful. Yes. Great. Thank you. 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 Thank you.